I'm J.R. Church. Welcome to today's webcast. Gary Stearman is with me again today. We're going to talk about some of the reports out of the Middle East. First of all, this one comes from ynetnews.com. Report, Israel threatens to send Syria back to the Stone Age. Them's fighting words, Gary. Well, not only are they fighting words, but they take me right to Isaiah 17. I happen to have my Bible open here, the burden of Damascus. That's the capital of Syria. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Uh, that's what uh, the Israelis are threatening. Yeah. According to uh, Avigdor Lieberman, threatened Syrian President Bashar Assad will lose his power should he provoke Israel. Recent reports of advanced missiles being transferred from Syria to the Hezbollah have led to more serious threats being made. He said, quote, we'll return Syria back to the Stone Age. What kind of reports are we talking about? Is Bashar Assad now the commander-in-chief of the Hezbollah? Actually, that is, has become his position. Uh, Bashar Assad uh, was a rather retiring intellectual type as long as his father remained alive. He studied in England uh, and he became a, uh, an ophthalmologist, an eye doctor. And uh, that was going to be his life career. And then his father died. They lifted him up to the leadership in Syria. And he's gotten tougher and tougher and tougher ever since. Now he's basically the commander in chief of Hezbollah. And they are about 25,000 strong. And they lie in the territory just to the north of Israel, JR. They're dug in. They have weaponry. They have thousands of short-range rockets. We have word now they're getting some long-range rockets. Uh, I'm reading a report here. Uh, Hezbollah is being armed with five major military capabilities. Number one, surface-to-surface -surface missiles that can reach as far south as the Demona reactor in southern Israel. Number two, uh, Iran has built for Hezbollah five expanded commando brigades. Their mission will be to capture and hold uh, northern Israeli towns. Number three, Syrian instruction, uh, instructors rather, are training Hezbollah militia, militiamen uh, in the operation of ground-to-air weapons. That's against aircraft. They would be Israeli aircraft. Number four, Syria has set up a Hezbollah special unit for attacking warships uh, and uh, warding off Israeli coastal landings. By the way, they are equipped with Chinese SS-26 Marine cruise missiles, which, by the way, are devastating and very accurate. Number five, this is the final one, I Iranian and Syrian military engineers have constructed fortified anti-tank lines in many parts of Lebanon. JR, there's just no doubt they're getting ready for war. War seems imminent. Well, all of this talk led to the Syrian minister in Washington, D.C., being summoned for <laughs> a warning. Washington has voiced contradictory viewpoints on the Scud issue. The State Department reported that they are very concerned by reports of transfer of advanced weaponry to the Hezbollah. However, over the weekend, senior administration officials expressed doubt as to whether the Scuds really made their way across the Syrian-Lebanon border. That's senior officials. That must be Mr. Obama. Yes. Don't you think? Uh, it could, you. could well be. Obama recently made a statement at the end of one of his uh, um, news conferences. This past Tuesday, it says, uh, it was a stark reminder of a far-reaching shift in how far the United States views the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and how aggressively it might push for a peace agreement. Obama just casually made the statement that his support of Israel had to be balanced against other interests. Boy, talk about talking out of both sides of your mouth. That's pretty bad, isn't it? According to the report in the Sunday Times, Israel now regards the Hezbollah as a division of the Syrian army. As such, Israel has decided to hold Syria directly responsible for Hezbollah's activities. We will not hesitate to attack Syria. If our national security is in jeopardy, said the Israeli minister. Assad knows that, and he's playing with fire. Gary, war is imminent. War is imminent this summer, and in conjunction with other signs 
other signals uh, that we tell you about from time to time. Uh, everything is fitting into a, a beautiful, uh, it's like the, assembling the last stages of a jigsaw puzzle, which was a bunch of pieces for the last 20 years, and now we're just about to put in the last piece. The picture is clear. Ahmadinejad of Iran, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad said this. He said, quote, Obama should start cooperating with us in practice. We don't need you to do anything for us to come out of isolation. Rather, we want to help you come out of isolation. That was his word to Obama. Uh, Mahmoud Ahmad Ahmadinejad is backing uh, plans to attack Israel, as you well know. He and uh, Bashar Assad are working in conjunction, and he's, he aims these, uh, uh, what can we call them, uh, audacious, uh, obstreperous, uh, challenges to Obama saying, come on out, come on out. You know, we'll help you get done what needs to be done. Now, the man, J.R., wants a war. Ahmed, Ahmadinejad sincerely wants war soon. Yeah. Meanwhile, Prime Minister of Israel Netanyahu on Remembrance Day said, peace requires a strong defense. Gary, what did he say about Jerusalem? Well, he quoted Theodore Herzl who said, and by the way, Theodore Herzl, way back in, uh, at the turn of the night, uh, from the uh, uh, 19th to the 20th centuries, was instrumental in building up Israel. Yeah, Herzl died in 1904. Yes, and way back in the early days of Israel's foundation, uh, he, he said this, don't rely on help from strangers, don't trust even the charitable, and don't wish for stones to grow soft. For the charitable give degrading charity at most, and stones do not soften. A nation that wishes to stand tall must place all its trust in itself only. Netanyahu quoted those words. And he said that Jerusalem must stay Israel's capital, did he not? He did. He said, the, in fact, he used the never word. He said, Jerusalem will never be divided. All of this, by the way, in reaction to his rebuff at the White House. We all remember the, uh, the uh, dinner invitation at which uh, Netanyahu was uh, told, well, we're not going to have dinner. You guys come up with anything, let us know. And Obama left the room insulting Netanyahu, letting him know precisely where he stood. Namely, uh, we're not going to help you anymore. We have other plans. Netanyahu says Israel can only truly rely on itself. That's the state we've come to. How about that? Tell you prophecies on the verge of being fulfilled. We, we know that many prophecies already have been fulfilled, but we're looking forward to the next war, uh, not, not with excitement, not with anticipation. I fear war. I don't like war, but I can tell you, God has everything under control. Trust him. Trust him today. He can give you eternal life. I'm J.R. Church with Gary Stearman. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you again tomorrow with our analysis of the news.